Advance notice of inspections may not be given except in the following situations. The first situation is cases of apparent imminent danger where the employer needs to abate the danger as quickly as possible. The second situation is circumstances where the inspection can most effectively be conducted after regular business hours or where special preparations are necessary for an inspection. The third situation is when presence of representatives of the employer and employees is needed or where appropriate personnel needed to aid in the inspection are needed. The fourth situation is other circumstances where the area director of OSHA determines that the given of advance notice would enhance the probability of an effective and thorough inspection. Any person who gives advance notice of any inspections to be conducted without authority from the secretary or his designees shall, upon conviction, be punished by fine of not more than $1,000 or by imprisonment for not more than six months or by both. When OSHA knocks, never allow the opening conference or the inspection process to commence until the appropriate pre-established management persons are present. This is usually the foreman, general superintendent, and, if possible, the safety director. To make sure that you're dealing with a bona fide OSHA inspector, ask to see the person's identification or credentials. The ID will include the inspector's name, office, and a serial number. If you're unsure of whether an inspector is from the government, call the local OSHA office to check. When OSHA knocks, determine the reason for the inspection. Is it a complaint-based inspection, fatality-based inspection, targeted inspection, or random inspection? Obtain a copy of the complaint. Most inspections are the result of employee complaints. The employee's name will not appear on the document. Most importantly, define the areas that the inspector will need to see and confine the visit to those areas or departments. Under no circumstances should you offer a plant tour or a job site tour. OSHA inspectors can cite any violations they see in plain view, regardless of the purpose of the inspection. For most inspections, escort the compliance officer to the targeted area or areas via a route where he or she is least likely to notice safety violations, even if that route involves walking outdoors. OSHA inspectors are instructed to take photographs or create videos or DVDs to document safety violations. Take the same pictures, videos, and samples that OSHA takes during the inspection. Debrief employees after their OSHA interviews in an effort to determine the scope of questioning. This enables you to prepare other employees prior to their OSHA interviews. OSHA might ask for OSHA 300 or 300A logs. These logs are the listings and summary of the various injuries and illnesses that have occurred. OSHA 300As must be posted February 1st through April 30th. OSHA regulations allow you to four hours to produce your OSHA logs. If you need an OSHA 300 or 300A log, contact the safety director. This slide shows do's and don'ts for an OSHA inspection. Do, be nice, verify the identity of the OSHA inspector, ensure that the inspector is wearing the proper PPE for the job site, provide the OSHA inspector with the appropriate PPE if they don't have it, take photos and notes during the inspection, provide a room or area for the inspector to interview employees, and immediately correct hazards pointed out by the inspector. Don't be rude. Refuse entry to the inspector unless you have a valid reasoning. Avoid answering questions. Tell employees to lie to the inspector. Give money to the inspector. Wait to correct hazards until cited or voluntarily offer more information than asked for. If the compliance officer becomes confrontational or gets out of line, remain calm and call the inspector's office. Feel free to ask the inspector to postpone the inspection if he or she shows up at an inconvenient time such as when production is under deadline pressure and it would be difficult to make accommodations. Keep in mind that this would be a short-term solution and the compliance officer may not agree with the postponement. Even if the inspector is willing to put off the walk around, he or she likely will still request various files and want to take a quick look around. An employer has the right to refuse entry to an OSHA inspector. However, OSHA can easily acquire either a warrant or subpoena Upon a refusal to permit the Compliance Safety and Health Officer, or CSHO, to an inspection, the CSHO will terminate the inspection. The CSHO will report the refusal and reason, therefore, to the OSHA Area Director.